you may or may not know that an image is simply the memory that is dumped into a file on the hard drive. The VM loads the image in memory and interprets the bytes to give the user objects. Today, I want you to learn a bit about the bits that are behind your object. I took here a very small image that is about 200 kilobytes, so we can take a look at it. If I load it up inside the VM simulator, I can look at it as a byte array. This is quite big even for a small image and fairly unreadable. We never work directly on it in VM development. Instead, we are using the simulator to give us information about a specific address. For example, here, I'm asking the simulator for nil object, the only instance of the undefined behavior class. I can then ask for other properties such as the number of slots or the class of nil object. When a developer works with a simulator, she has to work with addresses and pointer arithmetics. This can be a steep learning curve for newcomers. We propose to use reification and visualization to reduce the cognitive load of people working on the VM. To do that, we load an image inside the simulator and open Polyphemus, a tool that I wrote with Theo Rogliano. Each object looks like a box, therefore we have about 2500 objects. We distinguish a few objects, such as compile method and classes, with the different color. If we put the mouse over a given box, it prints out what kind of object it is. For example, at the very start of the memory, we see nil, false and true objects. We are also able to do some analysis through multiple kinds of query. Particularly, we can search for big objects by scaling by byte size. The biggest objects inside that particular image are the free chunk, which is the memory that is used to allocate new objects, that is also not really an object itself, the class table, which keeps references to every classes in the system, and the remember set, which is an hidden object used during garbage collection. Marcus and I looked at a clean Farrot 11 image to see which objects were taking the most space. Marcus was then able to do a series of small pull requests to reduce the base image size by a few megabytes. Another kind of analysis that helped Marcus and I understand where those big objects are is the computation of the referencers. If we do this in the visualization, the color of the referencer is updated. However, if we click on the object, we are able to query it directly in the inspector and browse all of them. This must feel very natural to small talkers, but in VM development, we still rely on the simulator and pointer arithmetics to navigate objects. Another kind of application that will be of more interest to any Faro developer is image breaking and repairing. I had a student come to me the day before this recording with a broken image. The image could not start up at all. That particular student was working on the Faro UI. At one point, he wanted to use a breakpoint inside a method that he saved. He also saved the image, then he closed it, and when he tried to open it up again, the startup sequence was executed. This sequence executed the method with a breakpoint enabled, the debugger tries to open, but the user interface is still not available, therefore the image was unresponsive. To fix it, we open this image into Polyphemus, we browse the classes of this image to find the culprit class and the broken method. Then we inspected it and patch it. We replace the bytecodes with the ones of a working version from a working image to remove the alt, and then we patch the method literals as well to remove the alt symbol that was inside it. Finally, we saved the image, and the student was able to recover multiple days of work. This was very rudimentary, but was done very quickly thanks to Polyfem. And we have plans to facilitate this tool usage so any developer can fix his image.